gentlemen, I am the C-H-A-L-L, your dog's drones fan, your YouTube sporting journalist, and, as you'll have seen today, the media manager for Sheffield City Football Club. Today, we're going to be previewing Donks Drovers hosting Crawley Town. Before we get started, just to give you a quick reminder, uh, yes, you've seen the news on social media. I am the official media manager for Sheffield City Football Club. Um, I'm really honoured to uh, be in the role. Um, I'm thankful for the club for giving me a chance. Um, I want to thank you guys, actually, the people that responded to the news. Um, you know, being a being a Donkster Rovers fan, I was expecting a hell of a lot of backlash from loads of Donny Rovers fans. Why did you go to Sheffield? Why did you give up Donny? First of all, I haven't given up Donny. If anyone's wondering that, don't worry. This se this season, at least, you'll be you'll be fine with me. Um, but no, I was really pleasantly surprised by the amount of support, you know, the, the amount of support that people had, I'm really, really happy about that, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's great to be around people like that, so, uh, thank you very much everyone for your support, and, uh, there will be a full video coming out this weekend, hopefully, if not next week, um, basically explaining the whole thing and how it came about, so, um, but let's focus on this particular video concept, this is Donks Drovers against Crawley Town, um, first of all, we're going to have a look at a bit of history on Crawley Town and uh, we're going to have a little bit of a look into how they sort of came up really to uh, to where they are now with, with Kevin Betsy in charge of the club. And um, and yes, yeah, so in terms of Crawley Town, uh, if you didn't know where they are and things like that, uh, Crawley Town are in West Sussex in the town of Crawley. And um, yeah, so here's some stats and a bit of history on the club. So, Crawley Town was formed in 1896 and played their formative years in the West Sussex and Miss Sussex leagues at a variety of grounds in and around the town. They remained a junior football until the end of the Sussex County League in 1951. The club then switched to the Metropolitan League in 1956 and won the Metropolitan League Cup in 1959. Crawley adopted professional status in 1962 and joined the Southern League in the following year. For the next 20 years, Crawley played in the first division to its various guises, apart from a brief taste of Premier, League, Premier Division football in 1969-1970. In 1983-84, under manager John Max, Crawley returned to the Premier Division where they remained until 2004. The club enjoyed various club success over the years, including winning the Sussex Senior Cup in 1990 and 1991. And in 91-92, Crawley enjoyed what was at best their time best ever run in the FA Cup and reached the third round when they enjoyed a money-spinning local derby with neighbours Brighton and Hove Albion at the Goldstone Ground in front of 18,301 fans. In 1999, the new owner at the time, John Dooley, arrived, ushering a period of success under the pitch under manager Francis Vines, who was appointed in January 2003. Reds won the League Cup and senior, uh, Sussex Senior Cup and then followed year wrapped up the Southern League title in convincing style, and in 12 points clear and adding the League Cup and Championship match trophy for good measure. In 2005, the club was under new ownership when the SA Group took control uh, and made the decision to go full-time. But poor results at the start of the season culminated in an FA Cup exit to Ryman Lee, Braintree Town, saw Vines replaced by former Chelsea and Swansea manager John Hollins in November 2005, but Hollins set about pulling the club out of relegation trouble with crowds dwindling due to inconsistent results, financial problems beset the club, and in March 2006, the players and management staff were being paid 50% of their salary. They eventually finished 17th, but at the end of the season were deducted three points for breach in the annual playing budget. The news the fans feared, the club was set to enter administration for a second time in seven years, came in June 2006. The club was just over an hour for extension when a third offer to creditors was accepted by the administrators. They started on minus 10 points and the customary penalty from entering administration. Hollands and his newly assembled squad all but wiped out the deduction inside the first week, but dipped in form and Hollands paid the price after another FA Cup exit to lower league opposition. John Yems and players Ben Judge and David Woosley were appointed joint caretaker managers, securing conference survival on the last day of the season. 
Now, in May 2012, Steve Evans' successor at the time was Sean O'Driscoll, but within two months, had accepted the manager's job at Nottingham Forest. Richie Barker was appointed as his replacement in 2012, guiding Crawley to a credible 10th place finish, but after a run of seven league games without a win with just one goal scored, he left the club by mutual consent in November 2023. Experienced John Gregory was appointed and guided the Reds to 15th place despite a punishing end to the season when they had to play 21 games in 10 weeks. Now, for a little bit of more recent history with the club. Now, this was on... Uh, now, of course, the club sold Max Waters for a record on the scores fee in January 2021 to Cardiff City. They finished that season in 12th place, a record high finish since their relegation from League One in 2015. Now, the club is currently owned by Wagme United. Um, now, obviously, this ownership has received its praise, but it's also received its scrutiny after the decision was made to scout the Sidemen charity match this weekend. Now, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens for Crawley Town going forward since they are managed by the former Arsenal Academy coach, Kevin Betsy. Now, this is going to be a very interesting game for us as well because uh, Donkster Rovers, for me, you know, they, they need to be on their A game here. Very, very simple. They need to be on their A game here. Take a bit of confidence from Tuesday, put it into that lineup and see what happens for me. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how they play as well. I think against Lincoln, like I said in the review, I think it felt very scrappy, very end-to-end -end for the first half. And then last 20 minutes or so, we put two up front and it felt our most creative opportunity. So, um, you know, and McSheffrey hasn't ruled out a formation change for this weekend. So I really wouldn't be surprised if McSheffrey went with the two up front. But if he goes with the one up front... My hope is that Miller does not end up playing like a target man. Because if he's going to go with one up front, it's going to be Miller up front. If they're going to go with two up front, it's between Agard and Waltman. But I would personally start Waltman, just because he was cup tied on Tuesday and will have more fitness. So I would go with Waltman up front with Miller. And this is going into the lineup, really. So I've gone with 4 4 2. And I've gone with 4 4 2 because I want to see him play 4 4 2 wing play style tactics. Um, you know, it's going to be dangerous playing it out from the back. However, if you play with it with a bit of fluidity and play that out from the back stuff quickly and get it away from danger quick enough, then you will have a more fluid attacking gameplay to your style. And this gives McSheffrey the best chance of succeeding for me. So, in terms of the formation, like I said, 4 4 2 wing play, get it down those wings, balance it on both sides, use both sides to each advantage to its own accord. And then, um, you know, real good cross in the box and really, really go for it down those flanks. Utilise the wing play. Hurst's a creative player. Maxwell's a great left back. Um, Noll's a decent right back. And we're going to probably have Molyneux on that right hand side. Hurst, Molyneux, Noyle and Maxwell. Four players, two at the back, two, two in the middle, who are creative, whether they're defender players or attacking players. So... For me, you've got to utilise that. And I think that 4-4-2 wing play really does suit the style a lot more. You could switch the 4-4-2 as a bit like a 4-2-2-2. So if you want the wingers to be pushing further forward, you can have them as sort of wide attacking midfielders. Um, that kind of role. And sort of have Molyneux and Hurst operating as wingers, but also having technical abilities of number 10s, if you will. So I think there's a way of doing that and doing a 4-2-2-2, uh, or a 4-4-2 operating as a 4-2-2-2 in attack, and then 4-4-2 as a, as a defensive formation. So you've got a really good way. And to be fair, the good thing about McSheffrey with his, with his squad is you've got a lot of versatility about you. So you've got players that can play attacking roles and defensive roles. So even though Rowe's going to be missing this weekend with that injury... Um, even though we know Taylor's going to be missing with a knock as well, uh, as well as the players that are already out, but we do have the players coming back as well, which you can see one of them is at least starting on your screen. So let's get into that squad lineup. So I've, I've already mentioned Miller and Waltman up front, Hurst and Molyneux on the wings. I put Clayton and Biggins in the midfield. And the reason why I've gone with that, and there's people now going to be commenting saying, why aren't you starting Ben Close? Why aren't you starting Ben Close? I think it's too soon to be starting him. I think he might come into that second half and uh, offer s s even more work rate in that midfield alongside Clayton or replacing Clayton and maybe have a, like a really good 
proper work rate midfield with Close and Biggins. And this is the reason why I started Biggins uh, over Close. And obviously Tomlin's injured. Uh, obviously Tomlin's on the bench for this one for me. Uh, and Rowe with him, him being injured as well. The reason why I started Clayton and Biggins together is Biggins the box to box. He can make the advanced runs. He can make the defensive runs. He's got the work rate. He can run about the pitch. Clayton marshals the play. Play makes it from deep or advanced or central. Either way, you could play him. You, you, you've got a nice fluidity about his uh, playmaking style here with Clayton. So I would have Clayton and Biggins because you've got someone who martialises the play and makes the advanced runs either side. So you've got a nice fluidity there where they can uh, run in front, run in behind, switch the play, switch side, work each way. So you've got a nice versatility and fluidity with that midfield. I think it works for me. So uh, we'll see if he goes with that. Back four, Maxwell, Oluwu, Williams, Noyle for me. Oluwu and Williams need to be with each other. Williams can be a brick wall on his best day. Oluwu, for me, showed some great signs on Tuesday against against the Lincoln team who, you know, take the, the fact that it was the Papa John's Trophy, take the trophy part of it away. That Lincoln side had a sub-goalkeeper, a debut midfielder, and the rest of it was players that had been involved in the first team or are around of a shout for the first team. So it's not a bad Lincoln side that we played on Tuesday. The fact that it's the Papa John's could shield it a bit, but it was still a Lincoln team that was a pretty strong team, a good League One strong team. So I still take the positives from that, and it's still you know three points in the it's still three points in the group. So for me, I would take the fact that Oliver put in a great shift on Tuesday and I would take that and I would start him right in that defence straight away. And of course in goal, Jonathan Mitchell as well, as usual. He's, a, he's probably one of the only players that 100% confirms his spot because even though Jones did really, really well on Tuesday, you know, the goal he conceded wasn't his fault and the rest of it was his good work. For me, I feel like Mitchell has still got that number one spot on lock. I think if Mitchell starts making mistakes and Jones starts making less mistakes, I think Jones could then be considered, you know, depending what the situation is. But for now, at least, Mitchell's the number one, and he's the one we should be uh, playing in the league for sure. Uh, so, score prediction then. I'm going with a 2-1 Rovers win. I've got to remain confident here. It's win. You know, there'll be people saying, well, I think we'll lose, I think we'll lose, I think we'll lose, I think we'll draw, I think we'll lose. Some people might think we'll win including me. But the reason why I've gone for a win is I want there to be confidence. I want to get some confidence from Tuesday. I want to develop that confidence into, into the game tomorrow. And um, as long as we keep it up, then we've got a really good shot here. So that would be my best shot. And, um, you know, let's, um, let's, let's show Crawley Town what we can do and try and get those points back on the board and give McSheffrey a boost of confidence because I think that's what he needs right now. A lot more fans I've seen have started to, have started to turn. A lot of fans turned on him before this. Um, and I really don't want McSheffrey to lose the complete faith of the fan base. There is some fans out there that still back McSheffrey. I said, I said about Gary McSheffrey, and I said this to Steve Ayres' face, I would give him to the end of October and see and see where we are. Not not really sack him, just see where we are uh, at the end of October. And that's my that's always been my stance. That'll always be my stance. That'll never change. So, you know, if if the unthinkable happened and he and he went before my where I stand, then I'd be shocked to be honest because that's not where I was expecting him to be sat from. But I believe he will stay i think he will stay for at least the next month but i could be wrong uh but i don't want to be wrong because i want to see what mcsheffrey can do now he's got his, some of his players back now i want to see what he can do with two up front more frequently and if he can put two up front more frequently and it continues to work and work and work i'd like to see him given a shot with two up front i want to see what he can do with two up front and i know steve air wants that to work as well so um, we'll see what happens, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll uh, we'll have a good showing uh, tomorrow. But that is going to be it for this, guys. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I am the CHALL, your Donks Drovers fan, your sporting journalist, and the media manager for Sheffield City Football Club. Keep living the Rovers life, and that is full time. Rovers tie die. Thank you very much, and I will see you all later. Ta ta for now.